I want to step back for a moment and talk about the way mindfulness is practiced, particularly in the United States, in the Western setting, because I think it, it I think a lot of people would say that originally it came through Buddhism, through Buddhist meditation, yeah. which then raises the question, is this is mindfulness in the modern Western sense an offshoot of Buddhism, or is it something else? Well, do you mind my pointing out? It's a wonderful question that the Buddha wasn't a Buddhist. So this question is actually kind of tricky. So we turned the Buddha into some big thing, <clears throat> but his fundamental teaching, you could think of him more as like a scientist, like a Ga the Galileo or an Einstein, somebody with very, very deep insight into the nature of his own experience and developed the language and framework and methods and laboratory tools and so forth for doing it, which is what all these meditative practices are about. And yes, a religion grew up around it. But the religion uh, is very interesting because, for one thing, there's no God. And, you know, it's like just from our point of view, it's an kind of interesting thing. But from the point of view of mindfulness, although it is spoken of as the heart of Buddhist meditation, it's about paying attention. How Buddhist is that? It's about awareness, how Buddhist is that? It's about loving kindness, how Buddhist is that? Or compassion. So if we drop into its essence, which has always been its essence, then those kinds of questions become really second order. It's not like we're secretly trying to turn everybody into Buddhists. That's our hidden agenda. <laughs> uh, well, let, let, me, let me ask a more pointed <clears throat> question then. Is, is mindfulness a spiritual practice? Well, it depends on what you mean by the word spiritual. I tend to stay away from the word spiritual as, you know, as if it had some kind of uh, toxic uh, outpouring <laughs> uh, because people get very attached to their view of spiritual and then they put that in counter distinction to everybody else who's not quite as spiritual as I am. Uh, so my working definition of spiritual is what it means for us to be truly human. And I leave it at that. It's like, who knows? Do you know what I'm saying? But, well, is giving birth spiritual? Is chopping vegetables yes. spiritual? <laughs> is seeing the look in your daughter's eye when she comes home from school, is that a spiritual experience or not good enough? Not really good enough. <laughs> so, you know, from that point of view, what isn't spiritual? As long as we are bringing full, open-hearted presence and awareness to it, it's like then the world, in some sense, lights up. So that, that's my particular view of it, but I'd love to hear. Well, I want to uh, follow up with Richie in particular because you have collaborated with the Dalai Lama, you have worked with a lot of Buddhist monks. How do you deal with this question of the connection with Buddhism and more specifically this question of whether we're talking about some sort of spiritual practice here? Well, you know, I, I very much agree with John about the nature of spiritual and I think that he put it beautifully. Um, uh, so, you know, for me, I, I don't talk about spiritual because I don't really know what spiritual means. Uh, and um, uh, I think that what we're talking about is part of every human being's basic innate capacity. Yeah. Uh, we all have the capacity to be aware. We all have the capacity to express compassion and loving kindness. And you can call that whatever you want to call that. It doesn't really matter. But that is part of the basic human repertoire. In terms of the work that I've done with the Dalai Lama and with other Buddhist monks, um, from a scientific perspective, if we want to study these kinds of practices, we need a group of people who've been trained in a very standard <coughs> way. And uh, in some sense, we have simply taken advantage of um, samples of convenience. Because these are individuals who've received extremely similar training. We can re be sure that um, uh, the kind of meditation practices that each person was doing was the same as the other person. Uh, and that's extremely important if you're going to bring in a group of people who are asked to engage in a specific kind of mental practice, you want them to have been trained in the same way. So um, uh, uh, we have just taken advantage of that kind of sample of convenience for, for, for that reason. There may be other traditions where there are comparable samples. Uh, and uh, in fact, there are serious scientists who are studying um, practices that come from very different religious traditions.